meter. What is meter? You've probably heard of millimeter and kilometer and all that. Mm -hmm. But what is meter? Meter is a measure. How many millimeters make a centimeter? How many centimeters make a meter, a kilometer? You know, you could go on and on. In poetry too, we have a meter. It's a measure. It's a measure of poetry. It's a measure of rhythm. We've already talked about rhythm. It's a measure of rhythm into regular and recurring patterns. Recurring patterns. Students just look at that word. It is patterns. P-A-T-T-E-R-N-S. Regular and recurring. That means the same beat. You know, it gives poetry what in uh, music we would call tal. You know, tal has to be equidistant. Tal has to come at the same, at the same pace, at the same speed. Now, meter is something like that, a measure. I have been talking about, we've been talking about, Namita and me, we've been talking about stressed and unstressed. For reasons of poetry, when we talk about prosody, when we talk about scansion, we change the words and the unstressed are called short, short. and the stressed are called long. long. Okay. okay? Just remember students, stress and unstress are now replaced by long and short. short. In order to understand what we mean by meter, how we measure, we already have looked at stressed and unstressed. That means we have looked at long and short. Notice, my dear students, that there are two symbols. Can you see something like a, 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 a lying down C maybe, slightly lying down C, and something like a hyphen? Uh, for those of us who know Hindi or Gujarati, and I'm sure all of us know that, you know, we talk of the Chandra Bindu. You know, there is a, there's something uh, below the dot for a Chandra Bindu, my dear students. That is the kind of symbol, symbol. that we use. And the other symbol is a simple hyphen. hyphen. Those of you who are comfortable with the computer, you would need to go into the symbols, right? You won't get it on there. You won't get it on your keyboard. You won't get it immediately. Mm -hmm. You'll have to search for it. And if you search for it, and then when you get it, I'm sure it'll be great fun because you can use it on the poems that you are reading. So what are we now doing? We are now moving on into technical language. Mm -hmm. You know, in order to be able to do something well, in order to be able to appreciate something, remember, my dear students, we have technology, we have techniques, we have technicality all around us. So when I talk about technical language, talk to somebody who does not know literature, who does not know the forms of literature, and you use a word like song, a word like ballad, Maybe he wouldn't even know. Or a word like lyric. lyric Maybe he exactly. wouldn't even know what we're talking about. But my dear students of literature, you know that these are technical terms. That is, these terms might have another meaning in ordinary language, but they have a special, specific meaning for us. Again, if you look at the computer, there are so many words. What is a mouse in reference to a computer? <laughs> so also, we have to learn the technical language. Can I have this slide, please? And therefore, we are now going to learn some new terms. Or, if you've already learned it in the class, we are going to revise these terms for you. The first term that we are looking at is iambus. Notice, my dear students, at the end of that line, you notice that there is a short and a long. The symbol, a short and a long. Now, the meter would mean whatever is in between those two vertical lines. That is one meter. So we have an example of for you of iambus, which is we have for you iambus examples that we have. That is uh, today Re rebuke ahead allow secure and uh, Ma'am, I think we need to tell them that the very word iambus has a rising. Absolutely. Tone. You have first an unstressed and then a then stressed. stressed. Or if you look at it from the prosody point of view, you first have a short and then you have a long. Look at chalky. Look again, my dear. It's the opposite of the iambus. 
in the iambus you have the unstressed or the short followed by the stressed or the long mm -hmm. notice the symbols then it will become clear right now what happens in amita what words do we have as examples of trochee for our students uh, never mm -hmm. giant mm -hmm. picture heating oh, so what do we have long followed by short, short. Then we move to spondy. Slide again, please. We have the spondy. Now, what happens in the spondy? Please notice, my dear students. It is again two syllables. But notice the symbols. And what do you see? What do you see? You see that both of them are, I'm sure I, all of you have got the answer right, both of them are long. That is, both of them are stressed. Like you've got rocks, caves. The perik is a total opposite of that where both of them are unstressed or both of them are short and therefore you've got not so. Don't be confused my dear students. If you keep looking at it more than once, if you take out words, if you take out lines of poetry and read them aloud, I'm sure all that I'm telling you here will become very, very clear. When we hear it the first time, most people think it's impossible to learn prosody. Most of you might be scared of the term scansion. Just do it more than once. And as has been said again and again, practice makes perfect. That is absolutely true of the process of scansion, scansion. Namita. Can we have the slide again? We move on now, my dear students, to trisyllabic. The word tri, I'm sure you know, means three. So what do we have three here? Notice again, we've got short, short, long. Mm -hmm. Namita, right. right? You notice the yes. um, symbols that we have there? Definitely. Short, short, short long. long. Can we have some words, Namita? Uh, disagree, mm -hmm. employee, mm -hmm. Japanese, volunteer. Absolutely. And dactyl again is just the opposite of that. And mm -hmm. so, Namita, you can have words for dactyl. Energy, operate, organize. Wonderful. What happens in poetry? These words, these patterns recur again and again. And uh, ma'am, if I yeah. may interrupt. Yeah, sure. I think uh, an easy way to remember is that first we should take the iambus. Mm -hmm. And then you know that the opposite of iambus is the trochee. Mm -hmm. Then you have the spondy. Mm -hmm. The opposite of spondy is the peric. Mm -hmm. Then you have the anapist. And the opposite of anapist is the dactyl. So that would make make it quite mathematical, if I may oh, say so. Wonderful. I think you're making it sound like ABC. <laughs> huh? It's as simple as that. So my dear students, all that you have to do is to remember them in pairs. pairs. You know, anything you remember in pairs always, we talk of binaries, right. right? Binaries are so important. So it becomes very, very easy if you can remember it that way. Right. What have we done? We have looked at words to understand the concept of I am this etc. Let's move on and read a little poetry which will make it clear. If I look at Iambus, my dear students, I've got thus I pass by and die. As one unknown and gone, I made a shade and laid. In the grave there have my cave, where tell I dwell farewell. And the trochee would be never, 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 never. This is Shakespeare, oh. you know. Mm -hmm. There the wrinkled old Nokomis nursed the little Hayavatha, rocked him in his linden cradle, bedded soft in moss and rushes, safely bound with reindeer sinews, stilled his fretful wail by saying, Hush, the naked bear will hear thee. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to the spondy, drop, drop, slow tears. And bathe those beauteous feet, which brought from heaven the news and prince of peace. And Perik, not so. When swift Camilla scars the plain, flies o'er the unbending corn, and skims along the main. The anapist, from the show come the notes. To their mill where it floats, to and their house and their mill teethered fast, to the small wooden isle where their work to beguile, 
they from morning to evening even take whatever is given what do you need to do students look at each of these lines i'm sure you don't immediately know which poems they are taken from but that doesn't matter take any poem where uh, you feel that the right and the left margins are are clear you understand what i mean it's like justified in the in the computer language look at that when the lines end at the same place it's likely that the syllables can be counted mm -hmm. now count the syllables first break the words into syllables mm -hmm. that's very easy right once you've done that then you mark stress and stress stress and stress see whether it's following any pattern is it one unstressed followed by one stressed or one short followed by one long if it becomes simple then you start putting your vertical lines but we'll take that up in greater detail right. let's have an example of dactyl also namita right. perishing gloomily spurred, spurred by, by contumely cold in humanity burning insanity uh coleridge had a very beautiful poem mm -hmm. just to make this clear okay. and so he says trocky trips from long to short from long to long in solemn sort slow spondy stocks strong footil able ever to come up with dactyl trisyllable i am big march from short to long with a leap and bound the swift anapus throng. throng look at these poets look at these poets how they are able to combine both sense and sound that's you true. know that's what makes great poetry and after all i'm talking of coleridge or one of the greatest poets not only of the romantic age but of all times have we clearly understood stress and unstress long and short if we have then i would like to go on to talking about feet right uh i'm sure all of you at some time or the other have had to measure something you might use an inch tape you might use a uh, you might use a ruler a foot ruler mm -hmm. uh, very simply people don't have all this they just use their you know one hand length they say equal to a foot probably usually so we have got some fixed measure so in scansion also we use the word feet remember we are using the word feet because the idea of scansion the theory of scansion is quite old and it's based on greek poetry mm -hmm. uh we have also moved on to meter so you have got both those words my dear students if you're thinking of how the feet has moved on to the metrical system and today we use the word meter what do we mean by feet we have given you ever so many examples let us just take anapis let us just take iambus mm -hmm. because we said that iambus is the commonest mm -hmm. in the english language mm -hmm. so you've got two syllables right now if the two syllables come once mm -hmm. then it is a monometer. monometer if the two syllables come twice it becomes a dimeter di if the two syllables come thrice it becomes a trimeter tri students you can play this game with your friends when you are free when the teacher is not there when it's a rainy day and there are very few students in class you could try and play this game what is the game suppose there are 10 syllables you ask them what is it you give them a hint you say it is iambic mm -hmm. and there are 10 syllables and you'll get the answer from the bright students and from the students who are willing to take the challenge it is the iambic pentameter, pentameter. the iambic pentameter is one of the most important mm -hmm. right one of the most important meters because it is what we use in the couplet right. the iambic pentameter uh, think of uh, pope's rape of the lock for example you have the couplet and it is iambic pentameter what does that mean every line has 10 syllables, syllables. right and then you divide it further there are 5 feet okay there are 5 meters and what are they they are iambic Big. that means you've got two and you've got two in a particular order my dear remember you cannot have one stressed and unstressed and then unstressed and stressed right. it has to follow that beat because we are talking about the rhythm of poetry and the rhythm of poetry comes only when the same thing is repeated Beat. again and again. again in fact you could tap your feet right or you could do this to have the tal of music so i am big pentameter mm. you could have i am big trimeter right you could have dactylic pentameter mm. right you'll have to work on that mm. but remember my dear students this is an artificial way after all 
what makes us say that 12 inches make one foot? Mm -hmm. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing God given about it. Right. There's nothing that you cannot change. This is a matter of convenience right. where we say 12 inches make, make one, one foot, feet. right? Or 100 meters make. Right. You go on like that. So also, let us remember that feet the measurement, the rhythm that we are talking about, the division of rhythm. Remember, rhythm is natural, mm -hmm. but the division of rhythm is, is something artificial. which is artificial, which we have made it for our convenience. Can we have the next slide, please? Yeah. This is Milton who says, first taught our English music how to span. How to span, my dear students, is how to measure. Words with just note and accent. This is Milton's uh, uh, compliment to the poet Henry Laws. Mm -hmm. Interesting, Namita, you and I don't know who Henry Laws is. We, do, we I, don't. I, I don't. Because we don't read him. Idea. Absolutely. Right. But Milton has given him such a great compliment. And so we remember him. You know, when we look at uh, prosody, when we look at scansion, isn't it interesting? Right. right? Uh, Henry Laws owes it to Milton that mm -hmm. we still remember his name. This is an art, my dear students. Scansion is an art. You have to make an effort to learn any art. I'm sure some of you have learned dance, some on music, some on poster making, right? right? Any any art, you need to have a certain amount of practice. practice. First, you should know what it is all about, mm -hmm. right? Even if you're singing light film songs, right? Mm -hmm. You need to have some idea of the beat, of the rhythm. So what do we do? First, you have to get the idea of the tune, mm -hmm. the beat, and the lilt, you know, by lilt I mean the rising and the falling. That you have Absolutely. to get. And then, let's move on to steps. Sometimes, Amita, I think prosody makes poetry very prosaic. Hmm. You know, because hmm. we are looking at it, one, two, three, four. And poetry is about flow. Right. But then we are talking about rhythmic flow. That's what we need to remember. Mm -hmm. Just talking about numbers might make it seem prosaic. But when you realize that you're doing it because you want to ensure, you know, that that flow is there, then you realize how poetic it is, how rhythmic it is. Right. So what do we do? We need to look at word stress. We need to count them. And when we need to decide on.